who is having trouble with the updates that will be in full effect this summer, August 17th, like the buyer agreements. Is that you? Now, let me ask this question. Who is afraid to explain how much they get paid? Okay, so for decades, buyer agents were so used to getting paid at the closing table, right? You know, we got used to going over the, the, the buyer process. We got used to talking about how compensation would come from the proceeds of the sale. We might talk about the steps of home ownership, working with inspectors, attorneys in Illinois. We work with attorneys in Florida. Everything goes into escrow. Lenders, maybe even the appraiser and showing, um, you know, we would just show houses and go to closing to get paid. Now, of course, there was everything else we did in the middle. However, like we just got comfortable with being comfortable. Now, did we have to explain agency? Yes. Were agency agreements required, depending on which state? In Illinois, we had to go over agency, but we could have designated agency, non-exclusive, no buyer agency. We could have exclusive agency, or we could simply use the consumer's guide to agency to explain how we worked. And we were deemed to be the agent of the buyer if we were working with them. Now, I'm sure many agents did explain how they got paid. Like some were just good at it. In 2001, the company I worked for, they went over exclusive agency. So it was easier for me. And it's easier for me today to make the switch because I've always had that conversation. I've even had the conversation around, don't get shocked, don't be shocked. Buyers never had the opportunity, or let me say it this way, it was never free. A buyer would have an agent, they really hired the agent, and the buyer essentially finances the entire compensation. Like wrap your head around that. We see people on social media today saying, oh, my services are free. No, they've never been free. It may feel free because the payment came out of the proceeds of the sale. The seller just didn't take it home and the buyer financed the compensation. So we, we should have never been saying that. Even our code of ethics, if you are a realtor member, was updated. So let's just quickly talk about, you know, the value of working with a buyer agency, buyer agent agreement. We can call it a contract. It is truly a contract. So first things first, first. First things first, it forces the agent to explain agency. For those of you that haven't done a good job, it's going to make you do it. If you're new, it is what it is. We should have been doing this for years, not just emailing documents, not just saying here, sign here. So, um, and just know there are many types of agreements. And depending on which state you're in, we, you could have dual agency as well. In Florida, it's illegal. I am going to say this, work with your brokerage and association. If your local association, state association, and your and or your brokerage is having training on buyer agency agreements, show up. Show up. I'm taking the class in Florida. I'm taking the class in Illinois. I want to understand the updates. Um, as of today, we are using exclusive or non-exclusive. Um, and are there more buyer agreements and contracts? Yes, there's more. Um, but you'll need one of these but August 17th. It is the thing. Even in Illinois, our law was already changed. And if you go read, go to competition.realtor, go look at the settlement, do your own research, August 17th, 2024, you will need an, a buyer agent agreement. So let's just talk about the value for a buyer's agent in no specific order and we can come up with more points. So I'm gonna give you five for a buyer client and five for a buyer's agent. So let's talk about the agent. Exclusive commitment. Depending on where you are, you know, we could, you know, we have over 45,000 realtors in Illinois. There's a lot more in Florida, but let's just go with exclusive commitment. We could easily have, you know, 20,000 properties on the market in the multiple listing service. But in most cases, if you asked a buyer, do you understand that I have access to everything that is listed in the multiple listing service and that I can help you with a for sale by owner? And I can help you, you know, pretty much negotiate anything. You know, I can help you with new construction. I can help you as an investor. Ask your buyer, do they understand that you have access to all properties? Because my husband, who is now a real estate agent, I'm telling you, he literally thought that every agent had their own listing. So if he thought that before he was licensed, you could only imagine that most buyers think that. So exclusive commitment. 
So you got to do a better job of explaining how you represent them. Number two, defined responsibilities. They've always been defined, but this will be in the agreement. Um, guarantee how you get paid. Uh, you, it doesn't mean you're not going to negotiate with the listing brokerage. It doesn't mean that you're not going to negotiate for a closing cost credit. It doesn't mean that. It just means you are saying what you get paid. Legal protection, number four. And number five, professionalism and trust. Many times the consumer just doesn't believe us because we're just like, trust me, and I'll just open the door. No, you need to show them what you do, define responsibilities. So now let's talk about for a buyer, your client that's working with you. Number one, dedicated representation. They're focused. You're their agent. This is why it's hard to be part-time or some of the time as an agent. Number two, expert guidance. If you're like, Carrie, I'm not an expert yet, do the research. If you know you're working in a new community, go do the research. If you know you're working in a new community, go look at the properties that are on the market. Go on broker tour. Go to open houses. Do your research. Know what's available in the community. Number three, confidentiality and trust. Now, that's a thing that's always been, but it will help them understand how you work. Number four, fair treatment. Number five, clarity and transparency. Transparency. Now, of course, we could add more. I'm just giving you some of the basics. Really quickly, before I give you some tips, let me just, I'm just going to go real quick through the history of working with buyer agents. 1950s, pre-multiple listing service area. I'm sorry, sorry. Pre-MLS era, buyers' agents were rare with listing agents receiving the full compensation. The 1960s, introduction of the multiple listing service. The, you know, when the multiple listing service came out, that's when compensation was put in. So sharing, you know, and cooperating with the listing brokerage, laying the groundwork for a buyer's agent. The 70s, uh, emergence of buyer agents. Buyer's agents began to gain recognitions with compensations, you know, typically split between the listing agent and the buyer's agent in the 80s. Growth of buyer representation, exclusive buyer representation became more common, solidifying the practice of sharing compensation. The 1990s, free me. Agency disclosure laws increased regulation, clarified agency roles, and alternative compensation models. Now, I can say this, you know, a lot of times you would be, we would be deemed to be working for the seller, even if we had a buyer. Now, when you work with the buyer, you work for the buyer, not the buyer and the seller. Unless you're in a dual agency situation, talk to your brokerage. 2000, when I got licensed, 2001, widespread buyer agency. Exclusive buyers um, agency became standard with technology increasing transparency and influencing um, compensation negotiation. A buyer could negotiate. Uh, the 2010s, competitive market, greater competition. 2020s, technology-driven changes. And there's a settlement, competition.realtor. So tech platforms introduced new compensation models. Com co uh, compensation continued to evolve with market and, of course, legal influences. So let's, let's, let's just talk about a process. And let's talk about we're going to start today. Grab your notebook, hit pause, uh, work with your brokerages. If you have a process working with agreements, it is easier to help your clients work with you. But you first have to do the work. In no, well, some of this is in specific order. But number one, um, you, you do need to schedule yourself. But number one, lead generation and conversion. If you lead generate, and then after you've generated a lead, you put your client in your client relationship management tool or in the multiple listing service, because that could be your CRM, um, you need to have a buyer consultation and discovery. Right. Then, you know, we find out everything they want, wrote it down on a real sheet of paper and you ask them a lot of questions. Then you go over the steps to home ownership and then you recommend loan officers or mortgage companies. Maybe they already have one. And then once they are fully underwritten, um, you continue to follow up. And during the steps of home ownership, you figure out what they want. Number four agency and how you get paid. You need to explain it. You need to explain what agency is. Um, and then you need to tell your buyer that they pay you. They have always paid you. Even if the, the listing brokerage is participating and cooperating with your brokerage. Number five, home search. What's their checklist? What's their dream home? 
Uh, you're going to, you know, search for properties. You know, again, you can help them with for sale by owner, new construction. You are, you, you have their dream wish list and you're going to help them look for the property. You're going to always follow up. Number six, you're going to have the list of when you spend money checklist, right? Earnest money, down payment, maybe the application um, with the mortgage company, when they have the appraisal, when they have an inspection, when they go to closing, right? Did they get a down payment resource? You're going to go over when they are writing checks and where the money must come from. Work with a lender. Uh, number seven, you're under contract. Now what? So even if I go back to number six, you're shopping for a home, you go, went over the checklist, you went out and looked at properties, you scheduled showings, you've walked through the property and they're like, I want to write a contract. They write the contract. We'll say this is a part of six. They write the contract. Now they're under contract. What happens when they go under contract checklist, right? Who gets the documents? Your brokerage, of course. The buyer gets a copy of all documents within 24 hours. You send all paperwork to escrow or to the attorney and or to the loan officer, right? Then uh, what are the next steps? The do's and don'ts when buying a home. Number 10, take the tenant leads and convert the property address into a new listing. And then number 11, what other ways can you generate buyer leads and service your clients? So let me just give you some quick notes before I end. Your buyer pays you. There are several ways to get paid out of the proceeds of the deal, but you must have an agreement with your buyer, period. Your buyer pays you out of their own pocket. That's an option. The buyer negotiates with a closing cost credit. Your agreement must say what you get paid. And then notify the attorney, the title company, and or the lender of your compensation so you're not shocked at closing. So to wrap up, your marketplace might use different tools to generate leads. Learn the tools you pay for daily, daily via your multiple listing service, the local association, your brokerages, and, who, uh, and basically your brokerage and who you're sponsored by. Master the tools. You must also start. No one is going to bring the deal to you. So you got to lead generate and follow up and create a list of how you're going to work. Work hard today so you can work less later. Now, let me say this. If you have a if you have all of these checklists and you follow up and follow through, when you work with a buyer, it will be easier to convert. So I'm Carrie Little, the designated managing broker of Caremark Realty Group in Illinois and in Florida. If you want to continue learning to earn with me, make sure you watch this video and then make sure you join this playlist. You can also learn more from me at smartgrowmedia.com and on my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.